Just that no nonsense. I've come to you in another video talking about this situation with the Brooklyn Nets. Now keep in mind, guys, it's no surprise to me that a lot of coaches who could be potentially good coaches get fired simply because the coach does not agree or want to run the team system to the degree that the superstar wants. Because keep in mind, a superstar is going to be satisfied when the team wins and also he gets to post the stats and act accordingly to the brand that he wants to promote. And as most superstars, really, you're going to have a superstar that doesn't mind getting his stats or sacrificing such as a Steph and a Tim Duncan. But when you have a polarizing superstar such as a Kobe, a KD, a LeBron, even a Magic Johnson, because Magic Johnson got his coach fired, um, then they're going to be happy once they win and also gets to act according to their brand. Rather your brand is scoring 40 points, rather your brand is getting the triple-double, rather your brand is getting 16 assists, etc. Right? If that coach's system does not allow you to play to what makes you a star and makes you look bad, then the coach is going to get fired. Right? And however, there has been times where a team went after a superstar, and that superstar brings in their players. However, a developmental coach does not want to run those players because most likely those players they bring in is going to be old anyway right when you have a developmental coach you're going to run a, uh, pretty much keep the young players in right and when you hear these superstars such as KD LeBron etc get on TV and be like this team got a whole bunch of young guys um, this team got a great coach and I can't wait to be a part of the culture basically what they're telling you is this team got a whole bunch of pieces that I can trade away and get the players that I need because these players is not going to wait on the development if there are some young guys pretty much that can fit alongside them and develop fast, then they're going to try to keep them, right? They're going to try to keep them. So it was pretty much, <laughs> it was pretty much baloney to me, right, about this whole Kenny Atkinson thing. We all know that this team was a team that had enough cap space and enough young pieces and a young va enough value for you to ship away and get the players that you want, right? And you can see a bit of Spencer Dinwiddie starting to pick that up. See, a lot of these guys, a lot of these young guys fall in with this um, pretty much um, with the okie doke. Like, hey, we're a good team. And then they get a superstar. And the first signs tells you that the superstar does not fit with the young players. Or rather, the team doesn't win simply because the team doesn't perform to how they perform without the superstar. Simply because without the superstar, they get to do what they want. But with the superstar, he demands a lot of attention. And obviously, most likely, fans and the team is going to side with the superstar. And most of those pieces are going to be shipped, and they're going to get pieces that fit around the superstar. Right? You look at this situation with Kenny Atkinson. KD brought his players, DeAndre Jordan, Kyrie Irving. So if the team was going to listen to him for players, they're most likely going to come to him to green like Kenny Atkinson's firing. And if KD wanted Kenny Atkinson to stay, he would have stayed. So they were already listening to him for players. So they were most likely going to listen to him if he wanted him to be keep. So KD, I don't believe, went to the management and was like, get him out of here. But most likely, they let KD know, we're about to fire Kenny Atkinson, so what's up? And KD was like, do what you got to do. I wasn't feeling him anyway. Because there are two types of coaches. There are developmental coaches and there are championship coaches. And a superstar player knows what a championship coach look like. And a superstar knows what players and system can fit around him, right, to win. Or to at least make him get his stats and make him act according to his brand, whether they do win or not. You can see this over the courses of time. Even with LeBron, when he was in Miami. Except Pat Riley didn't fire Eric Spolster because Eric Spolster didn't want to play LeBron's players. But they did fire David Blatt because David Blatt didn't want to play LeBron's players. So let's see what they got to say about it. Did KD and Kyrie get the coach fired? No. That didn't happen. Kenny Atkinson had some question marks. Now I can tell you this. Those guys are both champions. They know basketball. They know an elite coach when they see one. And neither of them thought that way about him. Of course. Right? Like I said, they know what a championship coach look like. Right? 
they, this is the whole new era. When a superstar comes to your team, they smile to these young kids. These young kids like, hey, we're going to the moon. Nah, bro, you stand on Earth. We're going to the moon. I don't give a damn what they say. Okay, I can tell you that. Does that mean they went to management and like, we need something new? No. But when you got two stars, and really KD is that dude, they respect the hell out of Kyrie Irving because he's a nasty talent, but we know who this franchise belongs to. It belongs to Kevin Durant. Exactly. Basically, if, like I said, if they was going to listen to Kevin Durant for players, they're most likely going to listen to him, whether they want the coach going or not. But you know what KD and Kyrie remind me of? It reminds me of that Jimmy Neutron movie when the parents got abducted, right? I think that movie came out in 2001, when the parents got abducted and the kids were kids. They understood each other and they were just having fun. Right? So Katie and Kyrie, they understand each other, so they're just having fun. But soon those kids realized that they actually need a parent. So Katie and Kyrie is going to be all smiles because they understand each other. They're having fun. But soon this team is going to realize, and Katie and Kyrie, they're going to realize that they need an actual leader. The intangibles that they're forcing not to understand. And, and a lot of the stuff they say about the media, right, it is legitimate. But they're going to soon realize that they need an actual alpha male. Okay, so to sit up there and to act like it's not about him going and saying, I want somebody gone. Or Kyrie saying, I want somebody gone. But if they're not raving <laughs> euphorically about somebody, it speaks for itself. And nobody was doing that about Kenny Atkinson. You just felt like, yo... We respect him. We like him as a person, whatever. But are there better coaches that we can have for our situation moving forward? I know he heard it. I know I heard it. Well, please don't bring up Ty Lue, right? Obviously, they, nobody understood the Golden State Warriors firing. But then Steve Kerr, they lucked up on Steve Kerr, first of all. And it was a blessing in disguise for Golden State, even though Mark Jackson was also fired due to his religious views clashing with the liberal views Golden State had. But please don't bring up no Ty Lue. You want Ty Lue in the NBA simply because he's black. And I understand you want black more black coaches in the NBA. But you got to understand, I want actual good coaches also. Right? Tyron Lue is not a good coach. He's a figurehead. And if you get Tyron Lue on this team, you're basically getting your homeboy. They're just happy to be there. They're just happy to collect checks. And he's going to do what you ask him to do. And that's what we disseminated over the national airwaves last week. Having said that, I'm going to close by saying this. There's only three candidates for this job, as far as I'm concerned. They're all named Ty Lue. Ty Lue. Ty Lue. One of Ty them. Lue. One of them. And it's not because of Kyrie Irving, because, listen, they, 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 everything was Yeah, because he's going to do what Kyrie and KD asked for. He's going to be happy to collect checks, and he's going to be happy to have the head coach name, and also because he's black. Right? That's, that's why. The ideal when Kyrie, remember, Kyrie was willing to leave Cleveland when Ty was coaching there. Let's be clear about that. But, but we all respect the hell out of Ty Lue. He's a champion, and we should respect him and treat him because he's a damn good coach, and he deserves a head coaching job. But Ty Lue, Mark Jackson. See what I'm saying? They're, they're getting on a lot of these black coaches. Although I do would like to see Mark Jackson as the head coach. Keep in mind, Kenny Jackson had time to establish, just as Mark Jackson, a, an actual coacher, right? But uh, Warriors, uh, excuse me, KD and Kyrie felt like he wasn't it, right? And Mark Jackson was fired because his ideologies clashed with Golden State's ideologies. However, Mark Jackson is known as a guy that he does not back down on what he believes in, right? And this is a new analytical era. Mark Jackson doesn't buy by all that crap. If, it do if he does not agree with it, he's not going to abide by it, even to the point where he'll get the locker room on his side, just as he did with Golden State, right? He was trying to turn, Mark Jackson was so angry and pretty much in so disagreement with the front offense that he didn't want to agree what they had to say. And he was even getting the kids on his side, creating pretty much a standoff between the players coach and the upper echelon, such as the front office, which led to them firing Mark Jackson. So the front office could gain back control of the players and get a coach that they want. And they looked up on Steve Kerr. So let's see. I want to see how Mark Jackson can actually coach, right? I want to see that again. However, they got to luck up because this ain't a young team, right? It ain't going to be a young team for long. I know that because a lot of those players are still going to be shipped. 
they're probably going to try to keep Karis LeVert. All right, or if Sean Marks could get the one and only Greg Popovich to leave San Antonio. Oof. Those are the three, Oof. and not necessarily that. That's your best bet. That's your best bet. Let's try to get Greg Popovich. Although I would like to see what can Mark Jackson do. But I'm done with this whole time. I understand he's black. I understand you want more black coaches in the league. And I'm all for that. But but come on now. Right? Don't, don't be desperate. Don't don't be trying to. Right? You, you, it would be best to not get one at all than to sully the name. Right? That was a bombshell. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. We're rewinding that yes. last. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me, Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. Would you mind repeating that? Because you're not pulling that out of thin air. I'm just saying if Sean Marks was somehow able to convince Greg Popovich to be to come to Brooklyn, because you got to remember, Greg Popovich, you're seeing Tim Duncan, uh, you got you got Becky. I mean, you got you got these folks on his bench, all right, that he wants to elevate. I'm not saying anything other than Sean Marks closely associated with Greg Popovich. If you could get the great the great Greg Popovich to come to Brooklyn. Well, then that's a deal. I mean, that, 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 that's a big-time move right there. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen. The excitement saying, you feel I'm, just I'm, by mentioning I'm that. I'm saying if I was Sean Marks, Jay, Max, I would certainly try. Don't, 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 I would don't, certainly don't try. Don't bring Greg Popovich to Brooklyn to be with How do you, how do you right, think Popovich a, oh and God. Kyrie would combine? That would yep. be interesting to see. Popovich would make him the best possible player he could be. Or I he'd think. be gone. Or he'd be gone. And right. you'd get assets for him. I mean, okay. This is my opinion of the situation the real quick because, Jay, you're more informed about this. No, no, no. That's so all we are. Here's my, here's my reading of the situation. Uh, Kenny Atkinson's a real good coach. There are some coaches, fairly or unfairly, who get labeled as developmental coaches. In other words, they can bring a young core together. They can nurture young players. And at a certain point, you hire someone else to get you over the top. Yes. Buck Showalter. And that is actually true, Max Kellerman, right? So uh, Kenny Atkinson has fell into that Mark Jackson role. Like I said, it would be interesting to hire Mark Jackson to prove once and for all, was he actually that guy? Because so far he was a developmental coach. So Mark Jackson could try to work harder to get into the league because if he does win the championship, then he can probably make the Warriors and Steve Kerr look bad. It was like that for the Yankees manager in the 90s. Um, Mark Jackson, it's funny you bring him up. That's the perception of Mark Jackson at the moment, fairly or unfairly, at Golden State. Clearly, I don't. I think it's pretty clear that would not be the same team had it not been for Mark Jackson in the formative stages of that. And I think Kenny Atkinson is it, kind of getting hung with that reputation right now, which is not a bad thing to be, but it's, you'd like a shot to try to win. Here's my reading. Because of Ty Lue, I actually, that reads to me Kyrie Irving. Um, because whatever you want to say about it, he didn't want to. It reads to me that he's going to run the players that I want to run be there, whatever. When you leave and you see how it is, you're like, oh, wait, that was pretty good with Ty Lue. We, were, we won a championship. But I'll say this. Ain't nothing happening in Brooklyn unless KD signs off. Jay, you can you can say whatever you want in a second, but the dawn of the Brooklyn, like, if you have KD on the Nets, believe me, this is just the way the universe works. No one's going to be like, yeah, we're just going to fire the coach and bring in another. Thank you, Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman understands. Thank you, Max Kellerman. They was coming to him about the players, right? They wouldn't have signed Kyrie Irving by himself, right? They was coming to him about the players. They most likely going to come to him about the coach. And, and Kyrie, I mean, KD green-lighted it. Pretty much sent them signals. Do what you got to do. The coach and not check with Kevin Durant. So whether And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Tyron Lue or Greg Popovich was sending signals that, hey, bro, I call, I'll call, come, but you got to do something about that coach, right? And maybe not so sending the signals like do something about that coach, but, you know, trying to play around, like trying to pimp their way, like you guys got a coach already in place, but I'll come if, if it ain't working out. Maybe something like that, and KD got the signal, right, and green at the coach firing. I wouldn't be surprised at that either. Not he's leading the charge. It feels to me from the coverage and from reading the tea leaves, it's Kyrie kind of leading the charge. But KD would have to sign off on this, I imagine, or it does not happen. Yeah, I, I think Kenny Atkinson will be just fine. I think there's a lot of jobs. I think he'll be one of the hottest coaches on the market. The Bulls' job may come up with Jim Boylan uh, right here across the East River. The Knicks' job, I think he is incredible with molding culture and developing talent. Look what he did for Karis LeVert, 
Spencer Dinwiddie, Joe Harris got him paid $40 million, okay? I think he's great. But expectations have changed for this team. And when you bring in new personnel, different expectations with that different personnel. I think that's the expectation now is to win a championship. I see Ty Lu being one of the guys who's at the forefront of that personnel choice because I think he's you need a guy that's managed egos, massive egos. Kevin Durant is savant as it comes to basketball knowledge. Kyrie too on the court, the way these guys I disagree. When you're playing on Cleveland, because because Tyron Lue did a good did a didn't excuse me, do a good job at managing Kyrie Irving and LeBron, did he not? When you're playing with LeBron, the LeBron is the only ego you gotta deal with. There is no managing egos, there is no molding of the whole different egos. Right? When when LeBron comes on the team, everything becomes extremely and one sided and it's only about LeBron. So that's the only ego you gotta deal with. But when Kyrie Irving ego started to show, he couldn't deal with it. And Kyrie Irving requested for a trade. Guys talk as far as schematically, uh, scouting report, understanding. They love all this. They pay attention to the, the idiosyncrasies of the games, the nuances of the games. But you need somebody who can mold egos to say, all right, Kyrie, I need you to get, get off your high horse for a second. Okay, KD, I've been there. I've done that before. I think Ty Lue is perfectly positioned for this team currently at where they're at. Now, Jock Vaughn is going to get a crack at it the rest of the year. But I think NBA caliber expectations – I, championship expectations, I think Ty Lue might lead them in that category. I, I don't. Well, keep in mind, it seems to me that the Nets will love to have Greg Popovich, but it seems to me that they will also love to have Tyron Lue. Jay Williams is close with KD. He also, I think, I don't know if he's the moderator of that show, The Boardroom. I think he is, right? But I do know that he's regularly on that show, The Boardroom. So he most likely talked to KD and Kyrie about it, right? And most of these guys that are coastal players, um, they're going to go on the show and they're going to offer or speak in that player's point of view. But if you're as close as the player as Jay William, as close to KD, right? And keep in mind, KD is going to speak his mind. Then he's going to probably say what the players are deep, thinking deep down, right? When you look at Brian Windhorse or David McMenamin or whatever the brother name is, Dave McMenamin or Brian Windhorse, when um, the media tried to question some of LeBron's tough decisions, Brian Windhorst or Dave Mendigman will come on the show and start explaining it. So you can already tell that someone in LeBron's camp must have talked to Dave Mendigman or Brian Windhorst, most likely Brian Windhorst, to pretty much tell you what the player is thinking, right? So I think I see Jay Will as that player. He's pretty much like the messenger, right? He's the messenger of Kevin Durant. He's going to come over here. He's going to try to reason and tell you what they really want. So it tells me that the Nets really want Tyron Lue because Tyron Lue is going to run what KD and Kyrie wants to run, right? But I think they're over their heads with this whole Tyron Lue thing, right? I don't know if I see... I, I, just, I just think Tyron Lue, first of all, he's become quite overrated, right? Keep in mind, Tyron Lue was a horrible coach, but when the Lakers wanted him after they fired Luke Walton, he all of a sudden became... An overrated, pretty much an underrated coach, excuse me, right? So, hey. A Greg Popovich leaving the San Antonio Spurs. Neither do I. You think Vaughn but gets I a try. real crack at it, a but genuine I crack? I don't. I, I, I don't. Vaughn's I, not really going to have a real crack. I, I, he's going to have a crack at it, but at the end of the day, you need somebody who's had championship experience that's going to be able to take this team to winning a Jay, championship. Jay, Basically, I want to run what I run, and when I disagree with you, I'm going to say that you haven't won a championship. So pretty much Kenny Atkinson had a lot of his disagreements. I can probably say a lot of disagreements with Kyrie. So probably a lot of the things that struck Kyrie wrong with Brad Stevens. When Kyrie wanted to talk to Brad Stevens, then Kyrie's thing was, I won a championship. You guys haven't won. I won a championship. Brad Stevens like, that's fine, but I'm still a great coach. Brad Stevens just didn't have enough of a backbone. So Kenny Atkinson just didn't want to deal with it pretty much. He green-lighted the firing. Kenny Atkinson, like, just put me out of my misery already. So I could tell with Tyrone Lue, when they have disagreements with him, they're going to tell him, being that he won the championship, right, with the Lakers, and also in Cleveland as the head coach. They're going to tell him that you're a nobody. <laughs> they're going to tell him to shut up. As you know, it, like, it seems to me like Ty Lue's going to be the guy, right? I mean, when Stephen A., you bring up Popovich, I'm like, whoa. But it seems to me like... 
uh, before Mark, you make a move like this, you have a good Mark idea Jackson of what you're going to do. Well. I brought up Mark Jackson as well, but I would say this also. First of all, let, let's be very, very... I credit Stephen A. for staying loyal to the Black Brothers, right? This is the whole situation with the Mark Jackson thing. I, I credit him for that, right? Being that the media has been turning on uh, Mark Jackson, right? So I credit Stephen A. for staying alongside the whole Mark Jackson line, right? I know why he's doing it, but I credit it because Mark Jackson can still, like I said... He's a developmental coach in my eyes, but he can possibly, possibly be a championship coach. Possibly, right? Possibly. When you say Steve Kerr lucked up on Steph and Clay, you can say the same things about Mark Jackson, right? So possibly. So it'll be interesting to see if he gets hired again. And maybe Mark Jackson, and Mark Jackson actually be a great personality fit because he's the alpha male, right? He's an alpha male. He'll do good with helping Kyrie and KD on the alpha male side, right? So he'll actually be a good personality fit for KD and Kyrie. Because like I said, they're like the kids off the Jimmy Neutron movie. They're happy that they have no alpha. Pretty much they understand each other. They get to have fun. But pretty soon, they're going to want a parent. They're going to want an alpha male. Very clear about something. Jacques Vaughn don't have no chance. Jacques Vaughn, uh, you know, to, as far as I'm concerned, he's he's... He's um he's big he's bigger staff you know they always get to, win they all to, or they always Even get to, they always get to interim jobs and then after that somebody else comes in all right it's not fair I don't think it's fair to them at all but it always happens. Well, that's it. If you like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and this that no nonsense.